Now, the Sultan of Sokoto, Al Haji Saad Abakar III, led Jamaatu Nasri Islam, uh, has supported guidelines issued by the Presidential Task Force on COVID 19 for reopening of churches and mosques across the country. According to the guidelines, churches and mosques are expected to provide running water, soap, and sanitizers at their entry and exit point. The guidelines stipulate uh, compulsory use of face masks at worship centers. And the Catholic Archbishop of Lagos has has opposed the continued closure of worship centers by the state government anyways. And joining us now is Reverend Father Patrick Alumuko to take a look at all of this uh, development. Good morning, Father Alumuko. Yeah, good morning. Now, what's your thoughts on the ban uh, not being lifted? Well, the federal government has lifted it, but on state levels, uh, uh, Lagos State, for instance, is saying, well, uh, churches and schools and mosques will still be under lock and key. How do you respond? I think it is quite inappropriate for states to hold back the um, unlocking the uh, situation and allowing churches to be open. I think it would be irresponsible of churches if they take this opportunity to open and to create a situation that would be uh, harmful to its members. So no church wants to do a thing that will be harmful to its members. So the states need to believe and to trust what the churches can do. We are saying that churches are better organized than the banks and the marketplaces where uh, people already are allowed to go to. Uh, the churches can organize themselves better, both at entrance points and also within the church and have the possibility of um, having self-distancing uh, between members. We are happy that they want masses to be, or masses or services to be held in an hour each. It means then that uh, many more services can be held in the course of the day, and many people can afford them to go to church. But the government needs to believe that the church has better capacity for taking care of its uh, members than the marketplaces and the banks. Mm. Father, let's talk about your parish, for instance. I, I, I know the Catholic Church, you always have a lot of congregants. How are you going to ensure, should you be asked to open uh, immediately, how are you going to ensure that in a parish as big as yours, for instance, all of these guidelines will be put in place? Well, parishes um, vary from place to place. And uh, we have township parishes. We also have, you know, rural parishes. Right. Uh, but in every parish, the it is a... It's incumbent upon the parish priest to ensure the safety of its own members. So the stipulations are clear. The washing of hands, the use of sanitizers, possibly the use of, um, the use of face masks and social distancing. Mm -hmm. I think that these are things that can be done. Even in rural areas, water, can be put at entrance points where perhaps you know someone, even if there are no taps, uh, water can be used to to be given to those who come into church to have their hands washed. Uh, in the city here in Abuja, for example, it's much easier. Most of the parishes have possibility. All they need to do is maybe from the gate house where there is an entrance to have um, water, a water. Um, uh, uh, hand wash, hand washing point, where people can have their hands washed before they get into church. Um, you're talking about big congregations. What we are proposing is to cut the number of uh, people who go to every mass or every service to ensure that there is clear uh, social distancing um, um, complied to. That means that uh, people will 
not being touched one another, and that will be safe enough. That's what we're thinking uh, is doable. This is doable both in the city parishes and also in the rural parishes. All right, Father, you know also that uh, part of the guidelines that has been given by the federal government says that the elderly from the age of 55, you know, have been advised against coming to worship centers because, you know, these uh, age brackets are the most vulnerable. Uh, how would you cater for such members? Because I believe there will be people of, you know, those age brackets in your uh, congregation, in your parish. What will happen to them? How would you... Uh, help take care of their spiritual needs also? I think of all the conditions that are being placed, this is the most mm -hmm. challenging one. Because, you know, how do you uh, kind of uh, split your community and say some can come to church and some cannot? Mm -hmm. How do you keep people who feel they are well but and want to actually to come and seek God's favors from staying at home. So this is a, a very challenging um, issue, which I think needs to be to be looked at. But I think that um, uh, in the worst case scenario, for those who are not uh, able to come to church, what we usually do in the Catholic Church is to attend to them at home and to bring them communion. Uh, now that there is um, the possibility or visiting uh, people at home, those who are unable to come can be attended to. But I think that uh, by and large, we're trying to um, ensure that people can come and worship. And we should not exaggerate this uh, whole thing. You know, if people come to church, if they are 60 or 65 or, or over that age, and are able to uh, keep the regulations and to have social distancing, I do not think that they are at risk at all. Mm. All right, Father Patrick Kalumuko of the Archdiocese of Abuja, thank you very much for your time with us this morning. Thank you.